All right. So, welcome everyone. So glad to see you all here uh, at the, the inaugural edition of the product design, uh, for product development, design, and arts meetup in uh, in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, uh, it's like the, the the first edition that we do of this uh, this series of meetups. Uh, we're sponsored by Lively. We're now at Lively, and you will hear uh, all about that all about that later. Just wanted to give a quick sort of uh, introduction of what this meetup actually is, and uh, we're trying to build this community. So, really glad that you are all here to uh, to sort of uh, kickstart this and uh, and, uh, and and enjoy uh, the evening and the nice speakers. All right. So, of the goals, of course, uh, uh, we would love to share some of our knowledge. Uh, we really like uh, doing product development at uh, at Lively, and we think it's very. Uh, we've learned quite a lot of stuff in the past year, so we definitely want to share this and we'd also sort of like to broaden a little bit, not only sharing on technical subjects, but also on the more uh, uh, design and product uh, subjects. Um, yeah, inspiring different fields of, uh, of expertise, so uh, we're trying to uh, sort of broaden the audience a little bit from, uh, uh, from just development to also include like uh, designers and entrepreneurs. Uh, and maybe to inspire a little bit as well. That's why I also added the, the arts part. Um, yeah, and uh, of course meeting people with these different expertise. So please uh, take the opportunity to look around and, uh, and see all of the different kind of people that, uh, that are around here. All right, so some of the topics, as you might have uh, as imagined, uh, uh, like digital product, that's what we, uh, what we, what we do with it lively as well, like all of the facets of both meeting an agency, being a, being a client, uh, developing a product, developing a strategy or a vision and a roadmap, uh, but also about uh, design, and Nina will tell you all about that, uh, will tell you all about that later. Um, and I added the arts as a little bit of a sort of a strange twist. I've not seen a lot of uh, uh, arts being shared, but uh, every now and then I see this popping up uh, that a lot of people uh, that are working in uh, tech also have like a super creative background. So there's a, a couple of people that do uh, music production, uh, there's people that are doing like very nice drawings and, uh, and at first sight you might not think, oh this is very well, this is like completely related to uh, the tech industry, but uh, in some way this also uh, helps to inspire people and once you sort of share this, uh, this also sparks a conversation and just makes you think outside of the box a little bit. All right, so for the, tar uh, for the, the, the target audience that we are trying to reach, maybe also a little uh, 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 show of hands. Um, we're, uh, 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 are there any product owners here? So I see one, two, three, and I think uh, and in front here, that's really nice. Uh, we have some designers maybe. Really nice, it's about, yes, five to six. Um, then we have uh, developers. Look at this, yes, that's also a, a little bit of the lively crowd, of course, nice. Uh, conceptors, strategists, anyone? Yeah, also, very nice, four to five people. Um, entrepreneurs, yeah, yeah very nice. <laughs> There's a couple of people raising their hands multiple times, that's good to see. Uh, and then we have the artists, the creators, the hackers, and the thinkers. Everyone, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, that's really nice. And maybe other people that I didn't uh, talk about yet? We'll see. All right, so uh, of course we would love to get your feedback, uh, 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 input, and maybe topic suggestions or anything that you would like uh, discussed or things that you would like. So please get in contact with me or someone else and we'll try to poke around to, uh, to find out. Then I want to uh, say a little bit about the schedule. So we want to host this meetup uh, uh, every uh, quarter, so it will be uh, like one, once every three months. Uh, so the next one will be in, uh, in February 2019. All right, so for the schedule for today, uh, I will be giving a talk on uh, working with agencies. Um, uh, we have Nina Zoll, who is one of our designers, going to talk about uh, collaborating between uh, development teams and uh, design teams. And then we have uh, Marcel Nahapit, where we'll be talking about uh, uh, storytelling, it's, uh, kind of also, and also sharing some, uh, some of his insights there. All right, so that was the first part. And then, lo and behold, we get into the first presentation of the day. So, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so uh, uh, kickstart your uh, digital project, uh, process with an agency. So this was a, a, a title from a while ago, but uh, bear with me, it will, it will be nice. So my name is uh, Peter Peerdeman. Uh, I'm a CTO and partner at, uh, at Lively. Um, and uh, so I've started, and we started six years ago, and I've uh, joined like five years ago with uh, full stack development. Uh, and now turning into uh, technical leadership, uh, but also leadership development within the team. Uh, coaching and hiring um, and maybe a little bit uh, personally some of you might know uh, that I also like to do uh, photography so I shoot a lot of picture pretty pictures at events uh, and of nature and uh, portraits and uh, I also do uh, some uh, electronic music uh, production as you can see over here so it's my channel theater music if you're interested I won't bother you uh, at, at this minute uh, but uh, maybe in some other meetup we can talk about that in the uh, in the arts part all right, so maybe to give a little bit of context, you are now at, uh, at Lively. Uh, we are a, a digital a business studio, or the uncool digital agency, because we work with a group of uh, 22 uh, very happy nerds uh, to uh, digitize business processes, which, sounds, uh, which maybe sounds a bit uncool, but we really uh, find our value in delivering, uh, for making sure that the, the lives of the, uh, the clients that we work with a lot better. Uh, and have their their daily experience uh, yeah, with the, with their IT systems be so much better than their uh, their their current experiences. So uh, we create the digital solutions. So our departments are uh, like product consulting, uh, uh, concept and design, development, um, uh, DevOps, and also uh, culture and knowledge sharing. So when we when we start a project, uh, uh, we uh, we also discuss with uh, with the client to see if they also want to. Uh, build their own team, so we also help them uh, build the team and uh, make sure that they can uh, develop the product further. And we do this for uh, uh, these clients, so Ministry of Defense and some compliance agencies, some uh, sort of small medium business, uh, small medium business to uh, smaller corporates. All right, so with that uh, part out of the way, uh, let's talk about the, the the subject that I wanted to talk about. So. Spoilers uh, are right ahead. These are the three things that I think are, uh, very, uh, are very important when you're working with an agency. And I'm standing in front of the slide, right? Yeah. <laughs> so first, uh, uh, write a good brief, uh, uh, focus on your strengths, and uh, uh, build the roadmap or think of the roadmap together. And of course, we'll get into this. So I wanted to start with, uh, with uh, writing a good brief. Uh, uh, which uh, for me translates a little bit, if you look at the, at the, at the question, how to get uh, from I want this and this app and it needs to look like, uh, like this and I want to know what the cost of this is to this is my problem and how are we going to solve it. So once you uh, uh, usually uh, or uh, what, what, ha what happens a lot is that uh, people will be thinking of, uh, of thinking of the solution and less thinking about what the good brief would be for someone to think about what, uh, what, uh, uh, what this, uh, the end solution would, uh, would look like. So I was thinking about this presentation was already uh, a while ago and I thought I want to get into this subject and then all of a sudden I heard this podcast. I don't know, does anyone uh, know the Verwondering podcast? Maybe some hands, people that know it. Yeah, probably mostly the colleagues that I that I was talking <laughs> that I was talking about about this podcast. Uh, uh, thanks for the for the hint, by the way, because uh, I got it from someone else as well. Um, it's the Verwondering podcast, also from another uh, uh, design agency, and they were talking about uh, they did a full podcast on this for an hour, like how uh, how to build a, a good brief. Uh, so they kind of mowed away the lawn under my feet, but I thought the content was good, so just uh, uh, sort of share uh, their insights with you here. So they talked about this for a while, and what they said, they sort of boiled down this uh, writing a brief to a set of questions that, uh, that, that you can think about to sort of, uh, to sort of align yourself, like what, what do I actually want from, uh, from this agency? So um, uh, when we look at the first chapter uh, of where, where you're going to uh, look into, or what would be good to look into, uh, would be uh, the organization, like what kind of organization are you running or what organization or do you want to become? Uh, sometimes you also have the idea of I want uh, this and this application because I want my company to look like this and this. Uh, but it's all very important uh, knowledge to share uh, with uh, the people that are going to help you uh, create the product. 
what are your challenges? What what are the things that you uh, that, that you want to uh, that you would want to combat? What, what's the what's the challenge that you have at the moment? Uh, what's the promise that you are uh, giving to uh, to both the people at your company or your clients? And what would be the USPs from your uh, from your company? What's the thing that really makes you unique? Because you want to. Um, a little bit of a spoiler alert for the second one. You want to focus on your strengths and not get lost uh, uh, in in, uh, in uh, technology or in the product uh, development that you're not that good at yet. And when we look at the, the project side, <coughs> you can also think about for this specific project, what would uh, what would the objectives be? What would the sort of the goals be that you that you want to uh, that you want to achieve within a certain time frame? Uh, but also, what what would the users be? And this this might be sort of a, an open door, uh, 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 but it's also always nice to sort of have this overview that at least you don't forget to think about. Like, what would the users be? And don't forget uh, don't forget every type of users. You might be thinking about your immediate customer, but your vendors or your suppliers might also be a, a, a user in your system or your employees even. Uh, then, of course, the budget, which is uh, which is always uh, uh, which is always a, a, a funny topic uh, to talk about. So sometimes people want to say, uh, "I just want to spend this," and then it needs to be uh, it needs to be com uh, needs to be complete. And others will not say anything at all. They just say, "Well, tell me what you think it should cost, and then uh, you will you will find out later." But this is something that at least you have to think about a little bit. Um, and the final one, the the team that you're thinking about. Uh, how this is going to look? Do you want to create your own team, or do you want to keep working with an external team, or what, what's the what's the, your idea on how the team should look? That's basically the the first uh, thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, when you're uh, talking through this, of course you don't have to do this alone. It's not like you get this questionnaire and just fill in everything yourself. Uh, but this is also pro this is also uh, an uh, an exercise that you want to do together with another, uh, with another, uh, uh, with an agency or with someone else who did uh, did a similar, uh, does a si similar project or is it like a like-minded to you? Uh, so don't have the feeling that you uh, that when you're writing a brief, and this is also uh, when, uh, for instance, you're doing an RFP or writing like a big, uh, a big uh, offer for for a, comp a corporate company. Uh, this is also not something that you have to do yourself. You can always think, uh, uh, ask people to think along with you, and this uh, is also a part of where you can st uh, already start with uh, creating a relationship with your uh, with your agency or the, the team that's going to work with you. So that would be the the, the first part. And the second one, uh, focus on uh, focus on your strength. So I want to talk. Uh, uh, a little bit about uh, one of our uh, one of our clients. Well, it's actually not her, but uh, she is uh, 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 one of the people working at the company. It's a, it's a big language institute, and um, uh, they uh, uh, combine the locations where uh, where this course is given with the teachers giving the language course and the uh, uh, and the, the the courses themselves, like uh, organizing the organizing the the planning and making sure that everyone shows up and. Um, uh, this company is super good at giving uh, lectures and uh, giving a high, a high quality uh, education to people wanting to learn uh, the Dutch language. So that's, that's really good. Um, uh, but the company uh, itself didn't have any uh, uh, sort of internal IT knowledge on how to sort of scale up their, uh, their planning and make sure that they can do this in the most efficient way. So uh, when we were when we were talking to this uh, uh, to this uh, to this client, we were th uh, thinking about how can we actually use technology to uh, maximize the time spent in your expertise to make sure that the the, the people at this company can actually uh, 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 focus on doing the thing that they're really good at instead of trying to wiggle their way into becoming uh, uh, a company that uh, has to. Uh, uh, sort of become an Excel master and uh, and uh, create their own system and find out how uh, how uh, product development or how software development works. So, <coughs> basically, what a what a what a nice quote was that I that I heard somewhere is if you don't uh, understand someone's craft, be very careful in filling in the blanks. And this might feel like an extremely sort of, uh, uh, so, sort of an open door, but it's also something that we fell into ourselves as well. So we're, uh, we're a, a, a development and design and uh, consulting uh, company. Um, 
Uh, and for instance, when we were thinking about doing our own marketing for, uh, for Lively, uh, uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, understand that expertise very well. Uh, and uh, and uh, we, you know, we try to do it ourselves and uh, sort of make all these assumptions and just try, uh, try out. Um, but we were filling in a lot of blanks, like how things are working. Uh, and that's also something that we're learning for, uh, for ourselves now as well. That in the same way that we're looking at this now, uh, uh, or that we're talking about this, about how can I uh, create a product, we can flip the table around and think, how can we write a good brief for, uh, for a marketing company to help us out uh, and maybe even uh, collaborate on uh, writing this brief to find out, like, uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, the other expertise uh, better. So this works, in, uh, this works in two ways in our industry. So uh, it works one way, the expert is actually learning uh, about, uh, about design and software, which is an Im Im uh, extremely important part of, uh, of all of our, uh, basically all of our projects, where we are helping our client understand uh, better how product development works and how you can uh, uh, orchestrate yourself in a way that, uh, uh, that, that gives the optimal input and the optimal feedback uh, to allow the product, uh, the product team to actually do their job in a good way. But it also works the other way around for the agency to actually learn about the branch and the, the specific expertise. And even if you're uh, doing the, sim uh, the same project, for a, a similar project in the same branch, the, uh, every client does, does things in its own way uh, or else it wouldn't have sort of the, 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 the right to exist. So there's always something that you uh, have to uh, get to know. And this, of course, uh, takes some time. What we find out is that the real magic happens when complementary teams understand and respect the complexity of each, of each other's niche. And this, uh, yeah, this might, might also sound like an open door, but uh, uh, when you are thinking about another, uh, when you're thinking about another niche, usually you always have your sort of your stereotypical view of well, it, it will be probably something about this and this, and maybe you've Googled it a little bit, if you've seen some topics. But uh, when you really start talking with people that have done uh, a, a, a study uh, for, uh, for a specific topic uh, about four years and have had five years of experience, uh, like really working this out, then you all of a sudden find out, like, uh, 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 I didn't take that study, I didn't get that five years of experience. There's a much more about these, uh, about these specific niches than you, than you uh, initially think. And the same thing goes, of course, with uh, product development as well. Um, yeah, so, we, so uh, when we, got, when we uh, finally got, got there, uh, we, uh, yeah, we, had a, uh, we had a very good success. And, uh, and uh, this is also the thing that you can build upon, uh, that you can build upon further. All right, now let's uh, get into, uh, let, now let's get into the, the how a little bit, we, because we talked about sort of the, 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 the why and creating, uh, creating the brief. Uh, let's see how we can create this, this, uh, this roadmap together. So what does a, a roadmap actually look like? Uh, which is a great question because it always looks, uh, it seems to always look different. I have a little bit of an example over here. So for the Ministry of Defense, uh, we are uh, uh, developing the maintenance application for, uh, for their uh, vehicles. So they used to uh, fill in uh, like a, a paper form and they had to fill this in every time that uh, the vehicle needs maintenance. And now we're thinking about how can we use technology to make sure that the, that the people doing this maintenance can focus on actually doing the maintenance instead of uh, doing the administrative work or the stuff that they're, that they're uh, yeah, that, that's sort of their overhead. So what you can see uh, over here, of course, uh, uh, what, what, the, what the most uh, uh, important part uh, uh, for us in this roadmap is uh, that you want to make sure that people get involved uh, in the creation of this uh, in this roadmap. You want to involve as much people that will that will be involved in this uh, in this uh, uh, project because this creates trust, support, and uh, commitment of everyone, uh, uh, which is super important because you're going to need this when the project launches. And basically, the whole uh, development and implementation starts, and people start using it. And they find out, oh, this uh, might actually be a little bit different. Uh, this needs to be a little bit different than we actually thought. And then you need these people that are actually your ambassadors or are uh, uh, the uh, uh, people that are uh, excited and have had their say in the creation of this of this roadmap. 
to be able to back your to back your project and to make sure that even when things are uh, a little bit uh, a little bit rough, then uh, uh, you still can fall back on these people uh, that you built trust with. <coughs> So uh, when we're looking at this uh, at this uh, 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 this phase of creating uh, of creating the roadmap, there's uh, there's sort of two different words that I wanted to uh, elaborate on a little bit further. So the first one would be the strategy of a certain company, or uh, I'm talking about a company now, but it could be an entrepreneur, it could be anyone with a, with a certain project. So when we're talking about strategy, it's really about your business strategy and what would your vision be for uh, what, the, what the company should do. And we talked about this as well uh, uh, a little bit earlier with the brief, like a part of your organization, like what, what are your ambitions, what are your goals. Uh, but, um, but how I wanted to uh, say this, like the strategy uh, should be de de uh, decided by uh, by the by the client or the business like for 80% uh, where there's still some some room to think uh, and to spar a little bit with your with your uh, with your agency but the the the, the meat of this uh, of this vision uh, uh, would preferably come from uh, from the client actually but if you're looking at the roadmap which would be more the how and how we're going actually going to get to this point in the in the in the in the far distance like this this spot on the horizon, um, it would be actually like flipped around and uh, uh, and of course there's there's a lot of room to work together here, but I I I would say that uh, that. If, if you're putting this responsibility of actually delivering a project uh, at an agency, it should also be very uh, important that they also take a driving seat in creating, or the product team basically, uh, that they create as, uh, are in the driver's seat of discussing this uh, roadmap and making sure that it's aligned with all of the, uh, with, uh, with all of the stakeholders and that it fits the process, that, uh, uh, that it fits the sort of the, the, the commitment that the product team has to delivering certain, uh, to the delivering certain milestones. And then, uh, uh, like we said before, with uh, with the budget, then the the, the sort of the different the, the difficult question comes, because creating this roadmap takes time and effort. It's not something that you just you know schut uh, uh, out that you just uh, <laughs> that you just think of uh, uh, when you're when you're creating an offer and you just you just write down something. Of course, you can do a first version of it, but it will be mainly just assumptions and things based on a, a couple of uh, conversations. But it. Um, but when you're when you're creating this roadmap, it will actually affect the estimated price of the project. And this is uh, when you when you go into a room and you really discuss with each other, like what should the, what should the project look like and how are we going to how are we going to create this? Uh, it will have a big impact on the price, which is uh, uh, like completely uh, contrary to uh, uh, trying to find out what your project that you're trying to build or your uh, uh, goals that you're trying to achieve would actually cost uh, as a whole. So um, uh, I don't know how many how many people are already uh, really uh, aware of this, but we've seen a lot of pitches and we've uh, seen a lot of clients ask for uh, ask for uh, for offers, and we've seen offers from from other agencies as well. And uh, nine of, out of ten times, agencies will propose a design sprint to elicit the actual uh, problems and requirements. So instead of just saying uh, Yes, I'm going to create this, and it's going to cost uh, I don't know this, this, and this amount of money. Uh, uh, agencies are tending now more and more to get into this sort of uh, product consulting phase with uh, with a client to find out uh, uh, to find out what they actually want to create and uh, get a better understanding of uh, of what the, what the, the actual product would look like or what the actual product would be because. It might be that you think that an app would be the best solution, but it could also be that it that that uh, that a web solution or even I don't know uh, Internet of Things solution or whatever might actually be uh, a better fit, uh, which is something that you maybe would not have thought about because uh, uh, the technology is not your uh, your expertise. So this design sprint, I would be curious to know how many people already know what a design sprint is. A little bit of an idea. Okay, that's good to know. All right. So uh, this, uh, I don't know actually if it if it really originated at uh, at Google, but they were very uh, early with this sort of giving this a name and giving it a format and creating a website and sort of launching this whole uh, launching this whole uh, product sprint. I think there's there's very uh, a lot of uh, names for for this uh, kind of phase, but it's very interesting to to think for a minute of, uh, to to see how or what something like this would look like. 
So usually this would be uh, maybe a week, it could be two weeks or three weeks, depends on how much you want to, uh, to, want to discuss and find out. Uh, but it could be as little as one week uh, where you have five days of super intense like workshopping to find out what, it, what is actually the thing that we're going to create. I'll just uh, uh, walk through this. Uh, so in the first part, uh, yeah, not really understanding, which would be like uh, kind of like the, the brief that we were talking about, right? Sort of getting to know uh, the, the project better and getting to know who the users are. Then diverging, so sort of brainstorming and thinking, thinking of all the, uh, thinking of all the uh, possible angles that we could approach this problem, and uh, finding out, uh, getting, gathering as much intelligence or uh, or data from uh, the uh, from the people that know what the system should do, uh, and really get a lot of ideas. Then you get into a phase where you're. Uh, uh, where you're going to decide which of these ideas would actually best fit the product problem that you were describing earlier, uh, and then actually prototyping something. Because uh, uh, creating, <coughs> uh, and, and this is of course done in one day, so prototype could be anything, right? If you're looking at smaller, uh, smaller projects where you have a smaller budget, a prototype might be sort of a pen and paper sketch uh, that you can put uh, can put into in front of someone who is uh, 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 looking at it and thinks, oh, it, it is, this makes sense. But if you have uh, maybe a bigger project, uh, a bigger budget, a prototype might actually be a fully functional uh, a web application where you can already click some stuff and get a feel for what what an application would look like with anything in between, like a clickable demo or a, you know a visual mock-up that you can actually. Put in front of someone as if it were as, as if it were real, and and see if uh, if it meets the expectations of a of a certain uh, stakeholder. And at the end, you you uh, you presented this this prototype, and you validate your your assumptions that you made in the start, and uh, and you learn what it works and doesn't work. And this would give you sort of an idea uh, uh, that's uh, that you can that you can elaborate on further. Well. Getting getting to know the project better, and this is like uh, getting into the into like the, the details of the project is of course one of the great things of doing this kind of a sprint. Or this could also take three weeks. Uh, usually at us, I think it's also something like uh, it could be from three weeks to a couple of months even that this process takes because you want to speak to everyone. But there's a lot of merits of uh, splitting up this first exploration phase and then thinking about how we're going to actually build or create this solution later. <clears throat> so just wanted to, to show uh, a couple of these because there's a lot more than just finding out. So for, uh, for smaller ideas and projects, uh, we found that you get the go, no go uh, idea much sooner because once you see something and you find out like oh, this, it's exactly what, it, what we thought it would look like and now that I'm looking at it, I, I suddenly understand that this is just not going to work. When you can go back to the drawing table and maybe do another design sprint or uh, find out, like, uh, this was a very good insight. It's something that a lot of our customers come back to, uh, uh, come back to us as well. We got a great insight, uh, and, but we actually found out that we're totally not ready yet to get into product, uh, to get into the development of the product. So we're going back, we're going to think about it some more, and we're going to see if we can maybe pick up one of the other ideas that we brainstormed uh, about earlier. Um, um, but, uh, uh, but that's also a great outcome, right? Because this means that you didn't spend your whole budget or your whole, uh, and it's not just about money, it's also about your energy, right? It's also about sort of going for something that you believe in and then finding out that, it, that it's not going to work. You want to uh, decide this as early as possible. Well, of course, you check your assumptions, and this is something that, that, the, whole, uh, that the whole process is made for. Um, but it also helps you to sharpen your ideas. So what is actually possible with the tech that is available now? So of course, uh, if you're not that much in technology or and you read about you read about it a whole lot, uh, it might be that you're thinking about like the blockchain or the VR, or you're thinking about like well, I've seen this 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 technology at other companies. This might be something that I could use as well. Um, but you always have a blind spot, of course, because it's, it, it might not be your expertise. And during such a design sprint or such, such a design phase, you might actually get a very nice insight about what other way you could actually uh, uh, use technology to, uh, to solve a, a specific problem instead of just thinking about how, uh, how a specific app would be created. 
And then one of the things uh, uh, I like uh, I, I like a lot is a coin that uh, it's a term that uh, Nick and Pim coined is uh, dating before marrying, uh, because during this this workshop you can imagine uh, that you're uh, involved very tightly with each other. So you have uh, multiple days where you're having long days with each other, sitting in each other, having like big arguments, and uh, you know, uh, sort of being very passionate about your own expertise. This is always something when people are really uh, are really good experts, they will fight very, very passionately for uh, explaining like uh, why something is important. <clears throat> and during this uh, during this time, uh, you will uh, you will find out if there is a match between you and the other person. It might be very possible that uh, that uh, that you have a very different approach of. Uh, of uh, of communicating, or that you have a very different approach of how you want how you're spending your energy and how you're matching with this other person, um, and this is also a great opportunity to really get to know the other uh, to to get to know the other company before you actually sign the big project and say you know, we're going to spend uh, the next uh, one and a half years together uh, building this this uh, this this uh, this very big solution. So this is a great way, and of course, this is uh, this is uh, this is going to cost something. But I think the, the the worth of finding out if you really have a match with the with the other company is like worth so much more if you're going to uh, spend the rest of the budget there as well. And of course, the, the last one, m uh, much more as, uh, accurate estimation of the cost, um, uh, because you uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a lot more about this person. You know a lot more about. Uh, how how their organization looks and and what what to actually expect from this uh, from this project um, uh, and you're also already talking about features so you can make a better estimation of that as well so a lot of talking a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, uh, different concepts but a little recap just to put the slide back on again write a good brief focus on your strengths uh, and create this roadmap together and then maybe as a sort of a, a final one uh, make collaborative exploration and trust building, like, really, like this, this third part, trying to, trying to uh, get to know the other person uh, as a first step in working with an agency. So thank you. And of course, I have to say, we're also hiring and we're super proud of our, uh, our new job site. So even if you're not a developer, engineer or a designer, uh, have a look at the site and, uh, uh, and uh, get to know our, uh, our new story uh, that we're telling now. All right, so are there any questions, people, remarks? Everything super clear. <laughs> Everyone ready to grab a drink? <laughs> Yes, in the back. <laughs> All right. So the so the question is, how do you how do you estimate costs? And that's like the that's like the the, the magic question because to be to be quite sure, no one really knows the answer to this. <laughs> no one really knows the question to this of the the answer to this uh, uh, to this question. But everyone has an uh, has an, uh, their own uh, way of uh, of sort of doing an estimate, right? So. Um, yeah, we've been doing uh, a lot of uh, 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 a lot of development over the years, and uh, uh, you try to think in sort of uh, units of what we call a, a sprint, a development sprint of a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, and I know this is not uh, uh, there's a there's like a scrum.org super <laughs> super uh, in depth person uh, sitting over here that knows exactly how scrum uh, how scrum should work. So I need to pick my words very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, but you get you get sort of a, a, a good feeling for how much work you can do in in a sprint. And this is uh, this is this is hard, and, and uh, uh, th this is dependent on a lot of factors. But you do have a hunch, or yeah, some story points, or you know, the different metrics of knowing about how much work you can do in one sprint. So um, when you when you cre create this this first offer, uh, uh, we try to 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 get into this exploration phase as soon as possible, which means that you can. Uh, that you can adjust this uh, this uh, this first design sprint uh, to to fit the the, the 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 size of the the project as well. So if it's a it's a smaller project, you know, oh, we can do this in a couple of weeks, and we can at least find out what would be the minimal uh, uh, sort of uh, functionalities that we need to deliver. 
and from that point, uh, yeah, it is it is a, it, it is just a rough estimation as well. Like, if we would look at these functionalities, uh, uh, what kind of what kind of stories would uh, would uh, uh, come out of this, or how many stories? So some things might be a lot more difficult than others. So if you at least have a, 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 you approach it like a planning session, you would uh, do in a, in a sprint. Uh, you separate this to at least know how many stories something would be, and especially the the parts where you where you think there is a lot of risk. So you 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 sort of go through this list to find out these are the parts that are most exciting or these are most difficult. You zoom into those and you sort of elaborate on them more, or you split them up into smaller parts, and you try to give sort of your gut feeling like how, how many sprints would it take to to do this to do this part. And this can actually be quite a lengthy process. Uh, uh, but if you if you sort of uh, zoom out then again, then you do get more of a rough estimate like it would be about this many sprints. And when it's too much, when there's too many sprints, then we do our darnest best to find out if we can even make this make this MVP smaller or to decide to, to decide along with the, the client to find out what would a smaller milestone be or what would be the, the, the first part where we can actually say that we're heading in the right direction or that we're creating a success. That would be, uh, yeah, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about actually launching IJ and actually launch the product. And after you launch, what happens next? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. The question is, how do you handle uh, the 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 continuation of a project after you've launched or you've created this MVP? Um, so uh, nowadays, in this first offer, there's not just the, there's not just the design phase and the build phase, but there's also sort of a third part of the of the the, the thing that is in there. That is, how are we going to uh, elaborate once we get to this point? And that would usually look so the, the the first part of getting from nothing to something is is a is a whole different beast together. That's really kickstarting and really like pivoting a lot and and finding out uh, finding out what what actually the MVP would be. Uh, and then the, the 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 elaboration on this, or the the the, the continued development, would be uh, would be sort of a, a, a separate part of the project where you can, uh, uh, at, with much more accuracy, uh, uh, decide these are this is the next phase. These are the next stories that we're going to pick up, and then uh, continue on uh, 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 doing sprints uh, in a sort of a, a reg. Uh, uh, a timely manner, a sequential manner, so, and then uh, you decide the frequency based on how much speed uh, the, the 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 client actually wants to uh, wants to achieve in uh, in developing the uh, product. But from our from our experience, uh, we find that at the at uh, the the, the uh, how do you say this the, the not super big corporates that already have a lot of uh, agile experience, it also makes sense to not have a continuous stream of uh, 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 development like full back to back like every week for a whole for a whole year because then uh, uh, the, the the stakeholders and the people uh, that that have to uh, 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 give their input into the backlog and uh, and do the testing and find out if the if the, the sprint really delivered what what should have been delivered uh, that it's sometimes nice to stretch this out over time a little bit more as well. Yeah. Nice. Good question. Let's uh, let's let's grab a drink and then uh, continue with uh, Nia in a couple of minutes. Nice. Thank you. <clears throat>